Hi, I'm Gareth Rees-Jones. I'm a clinical lecturer in the University of Edinburgh and I'm a consultant gastroenterologist here at the Western General Hospital. So there's massive interest at the moment in the epidemiology of inflammatory bowel disease. Our colleagues in Southeast Asia have seen an explosion in the number of new cases of inflammatory bowel disease over the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, and whilst the reasons for this aren't clear, uh, we think uh, a change in behavior, a change in lifestyle, uh, a change in dietary uh, um, behaviors in particular might be some of the reasons uh, why this condition is becoming more common. But importantly, none of this research has been done recently in the United Kingdom, probably for the last 15 years. So here in Edinburgh, uh, we work within a health board called NHS Lloyd, and that looks after just under a million patients, uh, which represents 16% uh, of the total Scottish population. So to answer that question, how common inflammatory bowel disease is, uh, firstly, we uh, needed to try and identify as many of those patients as we possibly could. Uh, so to do that, we used uh, as many different information sources as we could lay our hands on. Uh, and we're very fortunate here in Scotland uh, to have a very uh, rich history uh, in terms of the documentation and the data gathering uh, has been set up for, for some time and is very robust. So that means is that we have 30 years of uh, pathology uh, recording for inflammatory bowel disease. We can tell over the last 20 years how many of our patients have been admitted to a hospital. Uh, and in the last 10 years, we can really delve into a lot of detail into the sorts of medicines our patients with inflammatory bowel disease might be prescribed. And by casting that net really wide, uh, what we found is we identified 25,000 uh, potential inflammatory bowel disease cases here in Edinburgh. But in order to really understand whether that was accurate or not, a, a team of researchers and I sat down and, and very meticulously went through that uh, case by case of all 25,000 uh, to work out exactly which of those possible inflammatory bowel disease cases actually did have inflammatory bowel disease and which of them maybe had a, another similar diagnosis that wasn't inflammatory bowel disease, just so we could be as accurate as possible in, uh, in our numbering. So of those 25,000 potential inflammatory bowel disease cases, uh, just under half, 30, uh, 13,000 of those cases actually did have a, uh, a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. And then we rem when we removed those patients that didn't live in Edinburgh, who just came to hospital for their care, all those patients that weren't currently alive, uh, that lay left us with a, a, a cohort of who's currently living in Edinburgh with inflammatory bowel disease. And the term for that, the total number of patients in a population with a condition is called the prevalence. So that number in Edinburgh is just over 7,000 cases and that represents uh, about 0.8% uh, of the total population. And just to put that in perspective, that's three times as high uh, as, the, as, the, as the previous uh, estimate, uh, which was some 13, 14 years ago. When we looked at the breakdown as to uh, the age of those patients that have inflammatory bowel disease, we saw some interesting trends. We saw that the proportion uh, of patients uh, with inflammatory bowel disease rose as they get older. What that meant was if you're over 70, about 1.5% of the population had inflammatory bowel disease. And if you compare that to those under the age of 30, where it was ne nearer half a percent. So to understand, was that because patients were getting diagnosed when they were older or whether there was another cause, what we looked at is how old the patients were when they were uh, told that they had inflammatory bowel disease. And interestingly, what we saw is that the majority of patients were diagnosed under the age of 40. It's not because patients were getting diagnosed when they were older. So the reason the proportion of the population with inflammatory bowel disease was increasing as, pe as, as patients got older is because there were more patients being diagnosed uh, than, were, uh, than were dying with the condition. And the analogy I use for that is it, it's a bit like a bath full of water. Every year there's more patients being diagnosed, i.e. water being put into the bath, uh, than, than patients are dying, patient, uh, the water that's leaving the bath. So over time you get this inexorable increase uh, in the total number uh, of patients with inflammatory bowel disease, water in the bath, so to speak. If we then use that information to try and forecast how this will change over time, we can, we can make some interesting observations. Number one, we see that every year we, there's an extra 5% being added uh, to the total population with inflammatory bowel disease because of this threefold excess of newly diagnosed uh, versus patients who have died with inflammatory bowel disease. And if we model that over 10 years, what is 0.8% in 2018, in 10% is going to be over 
And if you look at the forecast in 10 years time as to how old these patients are, uh, what we see is there's going to be more uh, patients with inflammatory bowel disease over the age of 50 in 10 years than our entire current uh, population with inflammatory bowel disease. What that means as a doctor, it means that the patients I'm going to be looking after, they're going to be older, they're going to have other related health problems, and that has really important impacts in terms of the, the sorts of treatments that I can offer uh, and potentially how they respond to those treatments. In summary, we've shown that 1 in 125 people currently have inflammatory bowel disease and we forecast that within 10 years that number is going to reach over 1%, 1 in 98 people. Uh, not only is that one of, one of the highest rates of inflammatory bowel disease ever reported, uh, but this clearly is going to have massive impact on how we're going to provide care for our patients in the future.